Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin Knapp. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pequity, a compensation platform to simplify your every compensation need, as well as a former compensation manager from companies such as Google, Cruise Automation, and Instacart. And I'm here to continue an education on how to pay your people better. So today we're gonna to answer the question, you've got market data, now what? So here's how to digest it and why you're going to need ranges. So to start, you do need to first make sure that you have good market data. We do have a video explaining this and a brief summary after on the next slide. But once you have that data, what you're going to do is compare the data to your people, determine where your current people are paid in that percentile or range if you want to. You also need to look at it and compare where your candidates are paid against the percentiles and use that to assess the current pay practices and comp health of your people and how your programs are going to proceed in the future. As a reminder of what good market data is, this is just a quick brief summary of some of the things that you should be looking at, but really it needs to be in the safe harbor of the Antitrust Act, so aggregated correctly, at least three months old, there's no such thing as real-time data. You also need to make sure it contains significant data from your industry and or competitors. We recommend 10 companies. You can ask the surveys to confirm who submits their surveys. They usually just send you a list of participants. You also want to make sure that they're taking the due diligence to match the roles based on experience, type of work being performed, and the location and typical titles. Ask the company, how do you ensure this aggregation method is accurate? What steps do you do to ensure that your companies are submitting in a consistent fashion? That'll tell you a lot and save you a lot of headache and money down the road. Now, how you want to use this data now that you have it, you need to match your employees to the data, as I said. This is typically what we mean when we use the word benchmarking. It's literally trying to tie to the survey codes. Uh, there's often a list of what those codes mean, the job descriptions they match. Go through your employees one by one and match. Yes, I know it can be tedious, but you do it once and it's a lot faster every time after. Next, you need to compare your employee paid to the data. Which percentile are you closest to for salary, for equity, total comp? You need to look at these individually and in aggregate. It's going to tell you a story of how you compare against the people you're comping against. You then want to repeat this process for your candidate offers. If you do not collect your candidate offers, you are missing out on a wealth of information. I always tell people that survey data contains hundreds, if not thousands of people that you would never hire. They would not pass your hiring bar. They're not talent you're interested in. So you want to look at the talent that did pass your hiring bar that you are interested in, that you tried to actively bring into your company and see what is happening to their pay. Pequity does this automatically for our customers with our offers tool, but you can build the system with your recruiting team. It just might take a little bit longer. You just really need this data. After you have this, you need to look at how these comparisons pan out and ask yourself a couple of critical questions. Specifically, you need to ask, do we have the right talent? And who do we need more of? Which roles are critical? Not shockingly at tech companies, engineers, data scientists, anyone who comes from a data or R&D background, they're usually critical and get more budget. But at a sales organization, your sales might be the top of the company that you need to pay more. You need to discuss what your talent philosophy is and do you have the right people in your company? A lot of small companies look at their people and say, we have some good people, but we want to level up. You might need to go back to the survey and get from the next tier above you of companies to see what they're paying to poach the talent from them. Ideally, when you're looking at this, you want to figure out where there is an overlap. Where are your current employees at and where are the incoming candidates coming in at? You'll notice that I show the blue bar below the incoming candidates. Yes, I can confirm. New hires generally do make more. That is why you have to continually evaluate your market data and you need to be collecting that candidate intel. It's the most real-time data that you'll ever get. And it's how you're gonna ensure that your employees don't get exasperated and leave your company. Finally, once you are ready to move on to the next step and build a pay philosophy, after you've assessed who are we in this compensation market and how do we pay and you've determined what you want to change, you will need to build a pay philosophy. We have more in our next video on that, but just to get you a little teaser, here are some of the questions you're gonna have to answer to really build out a good compensation philosophy system. And if this seems like a lot to take in and you don't have a system to easily track your offers, ranges, employees, we got you. Reach out, use Pequity. 
I'm happy to hop on a call with almost anyone. And we have tons of comp experts and lots of people who'd be more than happy to guide you on your compensation journey.